Hello, everyone. I was just reading the Bible and something stood out to me and I wanted to share it with you all. I was reading Genesis, the 20th chapter, and um, it was and I will actually read it for you. But I wanted to preface it by saying the reason I wanted to share this with you is because I think so many of us um, have kind of lived our life under the shadow of misinformation growing up um, the way that I did. I was given so much information that was not correct. Um, It was as if, you know, whatever you did, it was just like, okay, just um, you can just do whatever you want to. You don't have to really take account for too many things because you just tell Jesus to take care of it. And, um, I, like, for example, they, they have this saying, there's no sin. I was taught there's no sin where there is not knowledge. I don't even know what that means. I, it probably has something to do with the law or something in the Bible, but um, I don't know <laughs> where that scripture is in that particular um, wording. But I was always taught there's no sin where there is not knowledge. And, you know, God is not going to hold you responsible for what you don't know. But what you what you but once you come to the knowledge of something, then he holds you responsible. And then I heard um, that God is only going to deal with you according to your heart. So if you do something and you don't know that it's wrong, then it's not really counted as a sin or it's not really counted against you because God is just dealing with your heart. And while there may be some truth to that, um, because God does deal with man according to his heart, you know, as many things as David did, God dealt with him according to his repentant heart. That's how God dealt with him. So God does see the thoughts and the intent of the heart. However, there are certain things that we do that do cause laws to go into motion. And so it really behooves us to understand what we're dealing with and to be diligent about studying the word and to be diligent about asking for forgiveness every day. And you'll see why after I read this um, passage of scripture, just like the law of gravity, the law of gravity. If you jump off of a building, the law of gravity doesn't care whether you knew about the law of of gravity or not. You still, if you jump off of a building, you're going to hit the ground, regardless of whether you know how that law works or not. So, um, I lived my life in a lot of ignorance, not understanding that there were certain things that I did to cause things to go into motion against me to my detriment. Um, And um, now that I have information, I'd like to share it with whomever will listen. So I'll start. um, It's a long passage, but I won't read everything, but I'll start at uh, Genesis 20, uh, the first through the eighth verse, and then I'll read 17 and 18, just so you can get a, um, a picture of what's going on. And I'll be reading the Amplified Version. Now Abraham journeyed from there toward Negev, the south country, and settled between Kadesh and Shur. Then he lived temporarily in Gerar. Abraham said again of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. So Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah into his harem. But God came to Abimelech in a dream during the night and said, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken as your wife, for she is another man's wife. Now Abimelech had not yet come near her. So he said, Lord, will you kill a people who are righteous and innocent and blameless regarding Sarah? Did Abraham not tell me she is my sister? And she herself said, he is my brother. 
in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know you did this in the integrity of your heart, for it was I who kept you back and spared you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not give you an opportunity to touch her. So now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not return her to him, know that you shall die, you and all who are yours, your household. So Abimelech got up early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things, and the men were terrified. Skip to 17 and 18. So Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maids. And they again gave birth to children for the Lord had securely closed the wombs of all the women in Abimelech's household because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And when I read that scripture that, I mean, I really had to read it and a second time I read it a second time and then third time and I had to sit back and I thought about that here is someone who's doing something that's normal to him it's normal in in those days it was normal to take women and add them to your harem however it was not a normal thing to take another man's wife and add them to your harem but the thing that stood out to me is someone lied to this man and he did what was natural to him to do. And God, God being faithful, wanted to spare the life of this man. So he came to him in a dream and let him know what was going on. He let him know that he was about to do something that was going to take his life. And um, so he had a chance to repent and um, he had a chance to escape death. And another thing that stood out to me is the fact that Abraham was the one who told the lie, which it kind of, it was a lie because of the fact that Sarah, he was married to Sarah, but it was not a lie in the fact that Sarah was his half sister which is neither here nor there, but the point was they were married and he did not tell the king the entire truth. And now the person that put the king in harm's way was the one who had the answer to his deliverance or the prayer for his deliverance. So imagine that, you know, so many times um, we may be led by God to go to people, to have people pray for us. And we don't want to because we don't respect that person or there's things in their life that they do that we don't think um, is worthy of them being called a person of God. But God may lead us that way to have them to pray for us because for some reason, Uh, the prayer of deliverance is in their mouth for us. That was one thing that stood out to me. And another thing that stood out to me was the worst thing is that this man did nothing. He did nothing in his eyes that was wrong. And he was actually innocent from the intents of his heart. That's why, you know, um, it's very important to ask for forgiveness every day. Like when we say our prayers, I think it's so, so important to ask God for forgiveness every day because of the fact that we don't know what we have violated. We don't know if we have violated a law. We don't know if we've done anything to anger God. And now because of what happened, everything in this man's kingdom that could bear children had a womb that was shut up from the wife down to the maids, down to the animals. So barrenness was in the land because of the fact that he was in possession of another man's wife, but he didn't know it. So he had caused something 
to go into motion because of his actions, but it was not anything that he was guilty of per se because of the fact of that his heart was not in the wrong place. So he was guilty from his actions, but he wasn't guilty from the sense of his heart. So, you know, when I think back to when I was small and they told me there is no sin where there was not knowledge, that doesn't apply here. And it's a blatant, it's a blatant lie. And it's, um, maybe it's, it's, it's taken a scripture out of context, but I think that's a dangerous way to live. We have to be diligent about knowing the words of God. We have to be diligent about knowing the rules of God. And we have to be diligent in prayer and asking for forgiveness. And we have to also spend time with God so that we know the voice of God. Had this king not known the voice of God, he could have said, you know, and pay attention. That's another thing. Pay attention to dreams. I'm learning that so much um, to pay attention to dreams because had this man not paid attention to God coming to him in his dream and telling him this thing about Sarah, he may have just dismissed it and gone and slept with her and he would have been wiped out and everything in the land would have suffered. But can you imagine that? So if you have anything in your life that doesn't seem to be able to go forward or you seem like you can't go forward or you seem like you can't progress in life it's worth getting on your knees and asking god god have i violated any law that will cause an injunction to be in place to where i cannot progress if you have problems bearing children if you have problems in your finances, if you have problems just going anywhere in life, if you have problems going forward and you keep going backward, if there is no fruitfulness in any area in your life, or if even one area of your life is touched where there is no fruitfulness, you should definitely go to God and ask God, God, what have I violated? Have I touched something that caused me to be that caused me to be unfruitful, that caused me to be unproductive? Because the Bible says that when he listened, when when the king listened to God and he went to Abraham and Abraham prayed for him, although Abraham was the one who got him into this mess, Abraham was the one that had the prayer for him to get him out of the mess. And then once he repented of what he did, he was able, the people and the women in his kingdom was able to bear um, fruit. A lot of times um, there are so many things that are unexplained. You know, this, this world is um, you know, this is unexplained and that's unexplained and we can't, we don't understand why this have unexplained infertility and secondary infertility and all of this stuff. And it's, it, 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 um, is worth when you come across something like that, it is definitely worth going to God and saying, God reveal to me what is going on because it's only unexplained because someone does not have an answer because they don't understand what's going on. But there is an origin to everything. There is an origin to everything. I'm sure if one of us would have uh, come through that land and seen the fact that everybody's womb was shut up, the, the, even, even the, the animals couldn't even bear children, you know, and when the animals stop being able to bear children, then the animals die off <laughs> and then there's nothing else for the people to eat. So, so many things could have happened since, um, this curse was on, uh, these people. So they brought a curse on themselves out of the innocency of the heart, doing something that they do every day. So there may be something that you're doing every day that you don't understand. 
can be carrying a curse in your life or can be propagating a curse in your life. And I just wanted to share that with you because that thing stood out to me so much. You know, it just really stood out to me. This man was innocent. He did something that was normal for the day to do during that time. It was normal to do. And because he did that, A curse was on him, even though his heart was not in the wrong place. There was a curse placed on him because he was touching someone else's wife and therefore not only him, but his family around him was cursed too. And, 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 um, we have to be careful what we do because what we do can affect those around us, the innocent, the innocent children around us. Even the animals um, were affected. So we need to definitely be diligent in seeking God, diligent in knowing God's laws, knowing the words, and diligent in asking forgiveness every day. So even if we did something that we don't know about, we ask God for forgiveness so that he can, first of all, forgive the sins, cleanse us of the sins, and lift anything that is on our life that is causing us to not be able to move forward. Until next time, be blessed.